I had a message that came in on Instagram and I want to share it. So it says, hi, Ryan, I am blank. I'm going to redact the name. I've always loved your videos and all that you do. I'm struggling to find uh, a way on how I can get a job or make a career as a BCBA outside of autism, which has my intention since grads, which was my intention since grad school or passing my exam. Any advice or resources that you can send my way? So, um, if there is any suggestions that you all have, stories, things you want to share in the comments about the uh, ways in which maybe you have. Uh, pursued getting outside of behavior analysis and uh, the practice the area that you're in specifically if you've gotten also out of practice with autism spectrum disorders and that was a goal of yours love to hear your thoughts and interests for uh, my perspective on this there's really two arguments that I've seen in the behavior analytic community the first one is that if you are really trained and fluent in the principles of behavior there's some there's a lot of asterisks here asterisks here um but if you understand the actual fundamental relations about how behavior is influenced um these folks sometimes will say then that you can't restrict the applications of a science because one's making decisions off of like natural laws about the universe and so I've had uh, a number of people that I've met in my career at different conferences that were extremely good at influencing behavior, but they did not carry their BCBA certificate. Uh, they didn't pursue licensure, these sort of things. Um, and they came from this basis of, if you understand the principles, if you're fluent and you can deliver results, then why? Why do uh, more than that? Um, now, I think part of this is rooted in like credentials are voluntary. The Behavior Analyst Certification Board put out a video themselves saying how these things are voluntary. However, licensure is not voluntary. So that's kind of the other side of this equation, which is over the last 10 or 15 years, we've seen certain things to start to restrict practice um, and types of people or experiences that people carry and credentials and things can start to be uh, required for you to be able to practice under a certain license. So if you wanted to look up which behavior analyst or which um, degrees, such as an applied behavior analysis, is restricted by a license, you're gonna have to look that up in your state. Your federal and state laws are gonna dictate those sort of things. Um, and here's the fun thing, they can be different everywhere. And so, um, first of all, there is the application of a science kind of argument of if you understand the principles, you know, kind of like uh, how engineers use physics and math to be able to influence and design things. Um, the argument is kind of based on that, that if you have the skills and you're fluent, then you should be able to apply them. That's one argument. But the second argument turns into um, that your, your ability to practice with a certain population or with a certain salute with a, in a certain area of behavior um, depends on your experiences, your degrees, your certifications, and your licensure that you hold. And that mix can be different based on whether or not you are in um, a certain state, federal, uh, you know, it, all these things matter. And so those are the two arguments that I've seen. The way that I like to approach this is that I like to reverse engineer things. So I like to ask a few questions, get your pencils ready. So first of all, what do you want to do with applied behavior analysis? If you could wave a wand, right? Uh, there's also another one of like, if a Martian just came down to earth, could you describe in simple, clear terms how you would be practicing, what that would look like? How would you be using behavior analysis? So that's your first question. What do you want to do? So someone like myself might answer this and I want to share behavior analysis via video and share stories about empirical data-based um, solutions to some of the human condition and issues that we face in society. So that would be something that I would start with. My next question, number two, would be what are the skills necessary? And I've talked about this uh, last week, but I'm gonna reiterate here. I've looked at this in like a quadrant format. So imagine four boxes here. I haven't built it yet, but imagine four. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna break down um, four different areas, two different areas that kind of cross. So do you have the skills? Do you not have the skills? Do you like the skills? Do you not like the skills? And you can understand that how these can come together. And so I look at what are the skills necessary for me to be able to do something like I may achieve to do. So whatever it is that you selected for your goal, you're going to think about what are the skills that you need. You can look at 
um, experts, subject matter experts. You can look at empirical research, what it says is necessary for these uh, practitioners or for uh, the solutions that you're trying to develop, what's mandatory. And you start to list those out. Think about the skills that you don't have. So I, which of those do you have, which of those do you not have? And that kind of such trajectory on how you can start to learn those. The other side is what are you interested and not interested in? Uh, what do you enjoy doing or not enjoy doing is another way to say this. And this one is super crucial. It should tie back to the first question, which is what do you want to do with ABA? Um, but you have to really think about here, like, are you sure that the reinforcers that drive your behavior at the end of the day, that influence your behavior, are they tied into the day-to-day -day that you would do if you really achieve that job in that area that you wanna bring behavior analysis into? And there's a fantastic book for this if anybody's interested. Um, this book is The E-Myth Revisited. Um, I will provide a quick synopsis if you don't wanna read it, it's a great book. but. They're getting at whether or not the reinforcers of the ideal job that you think you want are actually the reinforcers that drive your behavior. And it might be like, oh yeah, I know what I want, but you gotta really think about this. Um, and so for example, if I want to create video content, the reinforcers are, do I enjoy operating cameras and learning camera basics, and learning how to use this gear? Am I okay sitting in a studio by myself all day, especially the pandemic, all day, um, interacting with people only through like webcams or indirectly through comments asynchronously and do I enjoy that is are there built-in reinforcers for me of the editing process using this desktop to be able to do these sort of things um, that's kind of the connection and sometimes it's hard to know that and you got to find ways to get uh, some experience and sample things to be able to really test out and get some data on whether or not your reinforcers are really in that area you want to get into, relating it back to that first question of what do you want to do with ABA? So what do you want to do with ABA? What are your skills necessary and the motivations that you have? Do you need to shape those up and influence those? Because you can do that in behavior analysis. And then what are the certifications, degree requirements, and licensure laws? Those three things are super, super crucial. What are the certifications that you need? What are the degree requirements and the licensure laws? If we took the BCBA, for example, certifications, voluntary, but often are now being required by licensure that you have those. Now, there's degree requirements that are also built in to be able to get your BCBA and have that licensure. So the practice of applied behavior analysis in autism spectrum disorders, working with people with intellectual disabilities, some even organizational behavior management, um, these things are being dictated by licensure laws that require certain degree requirements, certi certificates such as the BCPA, and um, the uh, certain licensure laws. Um, so degree requirements, certifications, yeah, are like rolled up into these licensure laws. So I was trying to get out. Um, so these are things that I consider and think about. That was, that was uh, number three. What are the certification, degree requirements, licensure laws? Um, if you want to get into health fitness, if you wanted to, oh, let me bring it back into my example. So if I wanted to get into videography, there are not standard certifications that you uh, must obtain. There's some voluntary things that you can go do out there. Um, I didn't find anything that was like the certification to hold like our field has with the BCBA, for example. However, there's a lot of online courses and things that you can do that you can start to use as kind of like you know, badges and mini courses that, that do add to your resume. So I've done some of those. Now, when it comes to licensure laws, I haven't found licensure laws that say whether or not uh, I can practice videography in the states that I'm in. Uh, there are some laws when it comes to types of productions you want to do and whether or not you need to use uh, certain types of labor or go through student unions. So that is an area um, that I've learned about in videography. But then also um, the degree requirements. There's not a de degree requirement for film school um, a lot of people go that route, but it's not necessary. So I didn't have to relearn or re-go back to school through a traditional education model to be able to do things with cameras. Um, now, each area that you select on where you want to go and where you want to take applied behavior analysis can be different. It's going to be unique and you're going to have to figure that out. Um, and so those are my first three questions I'd like to ask. What do you want to do with it? What are the skills and motivation necessary? Do you have those? Do you need to develop those? And then what are the certifications? the licensure and the degree requirements that might be prerequisites to be able to enter that market and deliver those sort of services that you want to deliver. Um, my ultimate point here is that you need to get a lot of feedback 
and help with people that are successfully in the role that you aspire to have, all right? That's what I did when it comes to videography in this channel. That's what you need to do when you're going into other areas. A good friend of mine, Nick um, Green, did the same thing when it came to health, sports, fitness, the areas that he's been working in with behavior fit. Um, there are examples out there of people that have done this. Sometimes you can find them on our field, but sometimes you have to find mentors and ask others outside of the field, all right? Um, and I guess I just want to asterisk this at the end of just like, I'm some internet bro that's just like sharing how I view these things. And uh, in fact, at some point, it's really best that you talk to somebody to really sort this out. Not only in that mentorship, but legally as well. So I'll end on an example of some colleagues and I were trying to branch into a gifted and talented services. We we're trying to work with students that uh, are typically defined by uh, a number of different things. Extremely high IQs is one of them of 155 plus is the type of IQ range that uh, people were being selected for in the school that we were trying to provide some services to externally. And for that, what we did is we worked with a lawyer. It was a couple grand, but a couple grand worked with a lawyer and making sure that we were practicing within the scope of our practice um, in the jurisdiction that we were based in. Um, and that was really well spent. So I'd encourage people to do those sort of things because ultimately that's gonna be far more important. I'm just trying to provide this as an informational session off that contact, or sorry, off of that um, message that I got as a DM. So one other thing that I wanna end on here is there's actually a really cool resource page. I'm gonna share it really quickly. I'm gonna encourage you to go to it. I'm gonna paste it in the comments. Right now it's in the description of this video as well. And that is that you go check out uh, this page, BACB's Applied Behavior Analysis page. It's under About Behavior. Um, they have subspecialty resources. They have fact sheets for a bunch of different areas when it comes to autism, intellectual disability, uh, developmental disability, sports, clinical behavior analysis, organizational behavior management, behavioral gerontology, brain injury re rehabilitation, education, sustainability, behavioral pediatrics, prevention, intervention, and child maltreatment, health and fitness and treatment of substance abuse disorders. And these are all available to where you can go check these videos out with experts. So I wanna end this segment saying that there's a few ways that I approach this, or there's one way that I approach this and I start to get people, I ask them to start thinking about which is, uh, what do you actually want to do with a BA? Got to start conceptualizing that. Then what are the skills necessary, the motivation that you have? Do you have to shape and work on that? Are you really sure that's the area? If not, go back to one and then shape section two. And then what are the certification degree requirements and licensure? You got to start there. And then you got to start to seek outside perspectives, mentorship and legal advice to like really tackle this thoroughly. So check that out. Check out down below the link to um, the BACB's website. It's really cool that they pro like threw these up online so you can check out all the areas and the subspecialties that have been explored so far empirically in our literature and through practice. And uh, I'm gonna move on to the next segment. So I appreciate y'all. <laughs>